Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Now we're continuing our look into the book of First Enoch, and today we are in chapter 52. So I will place a link in the description box below so you can follow along with us. So if you have that open and your Bibles, let's begin with chapter 52, remembering that Enoch is continuing in his interpretation of this vision. Now he says, after those days in that place where I had seen all the visions of that which is hidden, for I had been carried off in a whirlwind, and they had borne me towards the west. Now in Job chapter 38, verse 1, Job says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said. And so we see that God uses the whirlwind specifically on these two occasions to introduce himself to man and enter into his dimension. And he says in verse 2, There my eyes saw all the secret things of heaven that shall be, a mountain of iron, and a mountain of copper, and a mountain of silver, and a mountain of gold, and a mountain of soft metal, and a mountain of lead. And I asked the angel who went with me, saying, What things are these which I have seen in secret? And he said unto me, All these things which thou hast seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed, that he may be potent and mighty on the earth. Now this is speaking of the thousand year millennial reign, and we're going to touch on this in a few moments. But this is the time period where Jesus will reign upon planet earth for 1,000 years. Verse 5, he says, The angel of peace answered, saying unto me, Wait a little, and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of spirits. Wait a little. Friends, isn't it so hard to wait upon the Lord? We are so inclined to be busy, and we are so inclined to have everything that we want right now. I mean, if you want to eat, you just pull into a fast food restaurant and within a few moments you have a full meal in front of you. And yet we are told in Psalm chapter 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. And that's exactly what Enoch is being told here. Wait a little. And there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of Spirits. Whatever you're waiting on this morning for the Lord to move on your behalf, friends, just remain faithful. For he is at work, but we must remain faithful and simply wait upon the Lord. Remembering that his time is not our time. He has promised to work for us, but we must simply be patient and wait. Verse 6, he says, These mountains which thine eyes have seen, the mountain of iron, the mountain of copper, and the mountain of silver, the mountain of gold, and the mountain of soft metal, and the mountain of lead, all these shall be in the presence of the elect one, as wax before the fire, and like the water which streams down from above upon those mountains. And they shall become powerless before his feet. And it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved, either by gold or by silver and none be able to escape. And there shall be no iron for war, nor shall one clothe oneself with a breastplate. Bronze shall be of no service, and tin shall be of no service, and shall not be esteemed. And lead shall not be desired, and all those things shall be denied and destroyed from the surface of the earth, when the elect one shall appear before the face of the Lord of Spirits." Now, basically what it's saying here is there's going to be no manufacturing. There's not going to be any battle gear. There's not going to be any guns. There's not going to be any microwaves. There's not going to be any TVs. There's not going to be any cars or planes. The things that man has created, the Lord doesn't need them. And so they will not exist upon the face of the earth. Chapter 53. There mine eyes saw a deep valley with open mouths, and all who dwell on the earth and sea and islands shall bring to him gifts and presents and tokens of homage, but that deep valley shall not be full. This reminds me of the birth of Jesus when the kings brought unto Jesus gifts celebrating his birth, his arrival upon the earth. And so shall we. We will pay him gifts and presents and tokens of homage for all that he has done and the price that he paid for us. And we'll do this throughout time. 
It says in verse 2, their hands commit lawless deeds. The sinners devour all they lawlessly oppress. Yet the sinners shall be destroyed before the face of the Lord of Spirits, and they shall be banished from off the face of his earth, and they shall perish forever and ever. For I saw all the angels of punishment abiding there and preparing all the instruments of Satan. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, from whom are they preparing these instruments? And he said unto me, they prepare these for the kings and the mighty of this earth, that they may thereby be destroyed. And after this, the righteous and elect one, remembering that's Jesus, shall cause the house of his congregation to appear. Henceforth, they shall be no more hindered in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And these mountains shall not stand as the earth before his righteousness, but the hills shall be as a fountain of water, and the righteous shall have rest from the oppression of sinners. Now, remembering that these two passages, these two chapters in Enoch are dealing specifically with the millennial reign, let's look at Revelation chapter 20. Verse 1 says, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, Jesus is going to reign on planet Earth for a thousand years. And during that time, Satan will be bound. But it appears that human flesh will still continue to be birthed and born during that time period. And because that's a time period of righteousness... Many of these will not have the choice to make between good and evil, between right and wrong, between living righteous and living sinful. And what's even more interesting in verse 4, notice this, it says, I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, many of us have been taught that we're going to live with Christ during that thousand year time period. But notice verse five, it says the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. So there will be some of us who will not reign with Christ during that thousand years. It appears only those who have been martyred for the name of Christ will reign with him for those thousand years. The rest of us will remain asleep in the grave. And he says in verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. So apparently there's going to be a second resurrection at the end of the thousand year time period. And it is at that time, according to verse 11, that we'll see the great white throne judgment. That's when all flesh will stand before the Lord Jesus and be judged according to their works. But at the end of this thousand years, those who have been born during that time period are going to have to face a choice to serve the Lord or to serve Satan. And so in verse 7, it says, when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. Why? Verse 8, he will go out to deceive the nations that are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city, which is Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so what we see taking place here is simply that those who have been born during this thousand year time period are going to have to face deception. And for that purpose, Satan is going to be loosed upon the earth at the end of that thousand year time period. And believe it or not, living in a state of absolute righteousness, purity, under the light and glory of Jesus, many will follow Satan and rebel against Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, friend, but I can't fathom that. And yet, according to the word of God, it will happen. Well, we're going to end here today, friends. We'll pick up in chapter 54 the next time we're together. I trust your spirit is being blessed and challenged through these studies. And I pray that this information is not only finding a place in your intellect, but it's being deeply rooted in your spirit, in your soul, so that day by day you're becoming a more faithful follower of the Lord Jesus, whom you have set out to serve. Now, I love you, friends.
as he wills. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.